In this video, I would like to cover ARDS or Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome. Uh, and other terms used to describe this uh, disease are Adult Respiratory Distress Syndrome. We also have Newborn Respiratory Distress Syndrome with a similar morphology but different etiology. Morphological term is DAD or diffuse alveolar damage. ARDS is uh, more the clinical term that needs to fulfill uh, clinical criteria. Also, shock lung and hyaline membrane disease are sometimes used. It is characterized by diffuse injury to the cells of alveolar capillary interface, so endothelial cells, uh, epithelial cells, or pneumocytes. And uh, this injury is diffuse in all of the alveoli uh, of the lungs. It is also characterized by leakage of protein-rich fluid to the alveoli. Uh, edematous fluid leads to alveolar edema and formation of uh, hyaline uh, membranes. Um, <clears throat> uh, that leads to impaired gas exchange with atelectasis. Basically, anything that uh, leads to severe injury of the lungs can cause ARDS. So among the common causes, uh, we have bacterial and viral infections, drugs, and inhaled toxins, also shock, trauma, burns, sepsis, or radiation can lead to lung injury, uh, allograft, rejection, collagen, vascular disease, or ARDS is sometimes idiopathic. Idiopathic cases are also called acute lung injury. Um, <clears throat> in this slide, we have pathogenesis of um, acute respiratory distress syndrome. So the first uh, underlying cause is lung injury that leads uh, to activation of inflammatory cells and activation of inflammatory mediators. Um, <clears throat> this results um, in the damage to the alveolar capillary interface with increased vascular permeability and um, therefore the fluid from the capillaries can leak into the interstitial space and also into the alveoli. Uh, together with um, uh, with plasma or um, fluid, uh, we have also influx of fibrin and erythrocytes, and the fibrin then leads to the formation of hyaline membranes. A dysfunction of surfactant then, uh, then leads to atelectasis. We have a few phases. Acute phase is also called exudative phase, and it is defined by capillary congestion, uh, we can see edema and intraalveolar hemorrhage, which is a result of uh, increased vascular permeability because of inflammatory uh, process. Um, <clears throat> there is also injury of type 1 pneumocytes with sloughing of these cells into the alveolar lumina. Uh, the fibrin-rich protein leads to formation of hyaline membranes, and we can see them tapping the alveoli, and that's the morphological hallmark of uh, uh, DAD. Um, <clears throat> the exudate is not only in the alveoli, but it is also in the interstitium. And um, oh, we can also see uh, inflammatory cells like lymphocytes, plasma cells, and macrophages. Uh, over the time, the acute phase can lead to proliferative phase, uh, which is characterized by organization of the exudate with proliferation of type 2 pneumocytes and fibroblasts. Uh, fibroblastic proliferation forms fibrinous intraalveolar plaques uh, of granulation tissue. And um, <clears throat> fibroblastic proliferation also distends the alveolar walls. Um, therefore, the gas exchange is problematic. And over the time, it can lead to chronic or fibrotic phase, which is defined by dense interstitial fibrosis with widening of the alveolar septi. And that is also sometimes described as honeycombing of the lung, so diffuse, uh, diffuse overall fibrosis. And finally, here we have the histological picture of diffuse alveolar damage. So this is the lung parenchyma with alveolar edema. So this uh, proteinaceous material inside of the alveoli, that's edematous fluid. And uh, we can also see hyaline membranes, so these structures, uh, hyper-eosinophilic, amorphous, proteinaceous material, 
uh, that's called hyaline well, in pathology basically anything that looks like this uh, can be called hyaline so in this case this is fibrin but uh, hyaline can represent basically anything that looks like amorphous proteinaceous uh, hyper eosinophilic uh, tissue uh, so these hyaline membranes rc and all of the alveoli and uh, we also see collapse of the alveoli or atelectasis on higher magnification we can see a lot of capillaries some of them with vasodilation inside of the capillaries we see erythrocytes and uh, <clears throat> uh, diffuse alveolar damage is also characterized by edema in the interstitium uh, with uh, chronic inflammatory cells like lymphocytes macrophages um, these cells, those are damaged pneumocytes that are sloughed into the into the uh, alveoli. So here are another another uh, pneumocytes. These two pneumocytes are probably also already necrotic. And here we see prominent vasodilation. Over the time, uh, this acute phase will lead to uh, proliferation of fibroblasts and formation of granulation tissue and if the patient survives it can lead to honeycomb lung or some milder cases can be uh, can lead to complete resolution especially if the type 2 pneumocytes are uh, are preserved so this is the picture of acute phase of diffuse alveolar damage or clinically called ARDS or acute respiratory distress syndrome thanks for watching